Not unlike It's a Wonderful Life, it's hard to miss a Christmas story on television each year. The 1983 film is now a holiday touchstone. So there's a lot of curiosity about a new musical adaptation which just opened at the City Wang Theater. WGBH arts editor Jared Bowen has the backstory. A Christmas story, the perennial festive film that finds itself in just about every living room at some point during the holiday season, is now all the rage on stage. It's time to give up. When you mess with a classic, you're in trouble. A lot of people come into the show with that chip on their shoulder going, what did you do to my favorite movie? And they walk out really surprised how loyal we are to the script of the movie. And in the movie, wherever the young boy, Ralphie Parker, has a fantasy, those are production numbers. Actor Dan Loria, well known for playing the father on the hit television series The Wonder Years, plays the narrator, recounting the story of a 1940s Indiana family in which young son Ralphie has just one wish for Christmas, a Red Ryder BB gun. It's a story with which Loria himself can absolutely relate. Well, you know, I grew up in an era where, you know, we got one present for Christmas. You always got your socks and your pants and your underwear, but then you got one present. And you usually knew what it was because your father came, what do you want for Christmas? I could use a new glove, Dad. Okay, I'll see what I can do. And you got a glove, you know. Well, this is really a boy. He doesn't care about all the other stuff. He really wants this one gift. The greatest Christmas gift I ever received. Are you kidding my old man, my dad gave it to me. A Christmas Story is a most unlikely one. Like It's a Wonderful Life before it, the film floundered at the box office, finding belated success only later on. Television brought it around, and when people realize that it's such a universal theme in A Christmas Story, it's really a boy looking for his father's attention. That's what it's really about. And that just carries through. The show has remained a family affair with Peter Billingsley, who played the original Ralphie Parker in the movie, serving as a producer. The first time he signed on to any project related to the film. It was also he who lured Loria, who cites the late actors Charles Durning and Jack Klugman as mentors who inspired his love of theater. Charlie, after every performance, he would come up and put his arm around me and he'd go, another 20 years, you'll be an actor. You know? <laughs> And then I did a play with Jack called The Value of Names. And uh, Jack and I had one of those nights. And Jack walks off stage and goes, you got to call them, boys. we got to have dinner and find out what the hell we did right tonight, you know. And we had this dinner. It was great stories. And Charlie, very emotionally, you know, he put his arm around me. He said, all right, another 10 years you'll be an actor. And I laughed. I said, yeah, I said what I always said. Okay, Charlie, I'll keep working. And Jack... Very seriously, he leaned into the great Charles Durning and said, Charlie, are you an actor yet? And Charlie Durning said, Jack, I'm getting damn close. So that's the attitude. It's those stories that make the story behind this one all the more heartwarming. All right, he told me he, today he's already very much in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> Jared Bowen is here. All right, so you've never seen It's a Wonderful Life, and yes. I have never seen a Christmas story. So now we're so now we have, we've got to rectify. We, we, we get, we're gonna have to have a little you know, double screening, a TV off or something. So how does this work? You've seen them both, the play, and is is it a, a, a good ad adaptation? Yeah, first of all, could I just say that about It's a Wonderful Life because I'm sure everybody watching now is saying, how is this possible that he hasn't seen it? Because now I feel like because I haven't seen it, I have to see it in a big way, so I have to see it on yeah. a big screen at some point. But wait, what was your question? <laughs> The, the, the adaptation. Oh, the it's, no, it's fantastic. I, I've, I have seen A Christmas Story a number of times, and it is part of my childhood, hmm. so it's sort of ingrained in me, just like I think It's a Wonderful Life is for uh, you know, my generation. many <laughs> generations, I was going to say. <laughs> Uh, and this is this is such a it's a heartwarming production. It's really really well done. It was in New York last year. It's much of the same cast who's here in Boston right now, and it also while in New York received uh, three Tony nominations. 
And I just think it's so well crafted because it really is a story about family and it's set in the 1940s in Indiana. And so you have this nexus, this, this family that the parents are so harried and frenzied and they're just trying to get, keep it together during the holiday season. And, and, uh, and that's what it really is all about at the end of the day is, um, is, is family mm -hmm. and love. And as Dan Loria pointed out, every time Ralphie has one of these major fantasies in the film, that's where you get your production number. So I uh -huh. think anybody coming to the theater is not going to be disappointed. And the other fun thing about it, frankly, is that you come to the theater expecting all of these moments, like the tongue on the flagpole, which yeah, I yeah. have no idea yeah, yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about, and all of these really other iconic moments from the movie. Oh, that's one of my favorite things to the thing. So, so the original actor, um, Runs Billingsley. Uh, Peter B Billingsley. P Billingsley. Uh, Peter Billingsley. <laughs> I did have a chance to speak to him with him a while back about this, and he never he he has sort of retired from acting. He's a big uh, Hollywood producer at this point, uh, producing a number of shows. But he said this is really the first time that he actually saw something that was that merited a, a treatment on stage or or any sort of adaptation. So that's why he's been involved. But he said his career sort of began and <laughs> ended with Ralphie. He says he's got no talent beyond that. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We were having this little discussion in the newsroom today about commercialization of Christmas, everybody kind of has that go around. But it's, this, this story is about somebody who wants something, but it's not it's not I know, in a commercial know, I think that everything is sort of timeless. We're all talking about how everybody, everybody's got to get to the mall, and they've got to get their tree, and they've got to do this, and they've got to do that, and, and the Christmas carols are too early. But we're seeing this. Gene Shepard, of course, you know, that great radio personality and terrific writer, he was writing this about his own family in the 1940s. Things have not changed. No, I know. You see parents in the same situation. They just want to make their kids happy, and it's, and it's through this one toy. It's a BB gun. But again, it, it goes back to why do they want to make their kids happy? It's just, it's being a family unit and, and just coming together and recognizing that little glint in your son's eye and, and wanting to make him happy. Man, you really are sappy. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thanksgiving. I'm out of here. The, it's the holiday season. <laughs> All right, Jared Bowen, thanks.